We'd like to start out by thanking our valuable sponsors. Sense of Satisfaction by Cricut is the place for all your fragrance needs. Plus, she's got products to heal what ails your skin and your hair. Shop at sensebycricket.com. Special thanks to our valued sponsor, John Travis, a financial coach and certified kingdom advisor with Richard Young Associates, a registered investment advisor. Thanks goes to Anna Patterson, my sister in the Lord who faithfully gives to this ministry every month. And to our newest sponsor, LaToya Gerard of Preach the Word Worldwide Network. She is a valued sponsor and a major encourager regarding this ministry. We need and would love to have you as a sponsor. Absolutely no gift is too small. Please note the info regarding giving throughout and at the end of the show and help us spread these testimonies around the world. Please note that the views and opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily the viewpoints of our sponsors. It's time to hear the story, make the connection, learn the lesson, and gain the wisdom. Are you ready? Let's get charged and be changed. The Sister Speak Brother Break Show. Conversations on grace, healing, and deliverance. This is Marcy Bush. Come on, let's journey together. Hello, and thank you for joining us for the Sister Speak Brother Break Show. Y'all know I always got a special guest, and today is no different. Um, our guest today is Jessica Pope. She is my niece and so many other things. Um, Jessica is a self-taught, or I should say Holy Spirit taught. I don't know how many different things, but you'll hear it as we, as we move along. Normally, she's on the other side of this camera. Jessica is the second part of this two-woman show. Um, and today, we've talked about it since the show started, like before the show ever began. We talked about her sitting on the couch one day, and that day has finally got here. And I am so grateful that you are with us. <laughs> Thanks for accepting. You're welcome. Yep. It's been almost two years coming. It'll be two years in June. Yeah. Um, but we started filming of course before June but mm -hmm. I'm just glad that you're a part of this journey so many times you have been my encourager mm -hmm. when probably only knew, you and Cricket knew that I was spinning yeah. <laughs> um, and you kind of helped center me and so I thank you for that thank you. Um, it's amazing because as different as we are we are so much alike very much so <laughs> and found that out many years ago mm -hmm. um but our journeys are so different mm -hmm. um i don't know how we ended up a lot alike with our journeys being so varied but yeah yeah we are and so we're here to talk about your journey it's a journey <laughs> you have been different from the start right. so at the start, <laughs> you were actually delivered at home. At home. <laughs> Had an at-home birth. Yeah. You probably Didn't can mean tell to. me more about it than I can. <laughs> right. I've only heard stories, but you actually were part of it. Yeah, so. you were part of it, too. You just, <laughs> <laughs> you just don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, you were supposed to be born at the hospital, but mm -hmm. some kind of way between your mama and your daddy and my mama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> things happen. were different right. mama got to the door to keep uh jill and kevin while beck went to the hospital and when she walked through the door they were like come on yeah. and she's like because huh? she said y'all better go on uh -uh. you come back here mama." <laughs> and so mama actually delivered yep. you yep and then you went off to the hospital yeah. and so i guess that kind of set the course for your journey yeah. it was not going to be the expected or the norm at all so um tell us kind of what you remember about the beginning the early just the early years um i think from from where where i can remember i think i've always like you said been different you know it's four of us Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I two always, girls, two boys, two girls, two boys, but I've always felt, 
uh, kind of different from them. I never could pinpoint at that time like what it was, but it was just like I always, even though my siblings are loving and all mm -hmm. of that, I just always, I always felt like I just, I didn't fit, you know, and the, the mold, not, not even such a mold, but I just didn't fit. Um, and it was nothing that my siblings did or said. It was nothing that, well, they play around a lot. <laughs> They play around a lot, but um, and and never anything that my mom or dad did. They right. never made us feel right. compared. But I always felt different. I was always into something. Mm -hmm. um, always wanted to be hands on. Um, I remember when on Saturdays we had to clean up, and usually it's girls y'all in the inside boys y'all on the outside but i wanted to be out there cutting grass mm. i wanted to be i wanted to be putting my hands to something i didn't mm -hmm. feel like being inside was enough i wanted to be okay. outside with the boys i wanted to be, uh i was always outside playing basketball and sports and playing with my brothers and all that kind and of if stuff. you still want to cut the stuff. grass you come over anytime definitely not <laughs> those years are done <laughs> but but yeah like so i you know um all that, all that kind of, I think, started molding me, and not, and now I'm understanding. Even with us talking, now I'm understanding. Okay, yeah, that that was building me to who I am now. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, I like I said, a lot of things were different. I liked art. Um, mm -hmm. Really, at a young age, I started drawing. I remember. I think you've seen it. Where I think I might have been like. 10 11 12 and I just randomly walked in my mom's room and was like can I draw on my walls and she was like sure and I think she came in and maybe two or three hours later and my room was filled with life-size mm -hmm. cartoon characters and she was like wow and the crazy thing is her response like sparked more in me okay because it could have went two or three different ways <laughs> right but the fact that she just let me be mm -hmm. who I was I really appreciate it because I really when I said it I didn't expect her to agree to it right <laughs> I wouldn't have I mean not only would I probably be like drawing right. the walls but I'm saying I wouldn't have expected her to be like sure right exactly and and the fact that she did I was like okay I'm gonna make this the most special thing ever. and I remember when I came over she was like I can't remember if you or her. I think she had told me about it on the phone. And uh, oh, and for people that don't know, <laughs> Jessica's mom was my sister. Um, yeah. So when I went over and it still was is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when I went over and I remember opening the door and like <gasps> just because I did not know yeah. it was in you. Yeah. yeah. And it was just like and the crazy thing what? is I didn't either. It just it would be moments where. Um, it would just be like, I want to draw something. And, and now I don't draw like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I do some graphic design, but I'm not a, I'm not somebody who's just going to sit down and just draw. It's got to be just something in me at that right. moment. Um, and then, it, you know, like I said, I thought then, okay, art is my thing. That's my thing. I love to do. And then it, I think maybe when I was about 13, 14, my mom and them had a choir anniversary. They didn't have a drummer. Well, one of my cousins brought his drums to the church, but he couldn't, he wasn't going to be able to play that day. Mm -hmm. um, had, I had been to their practices, but I had never like played the drums with them. Mm -hmm. And so I told my mom, I was like, I can do it. And she was like, you sure? I said, yeah, I know I can do it. And um, she was like, okay. And so between our regular church service and the, the, that day of the anniversary, I stayed at the church while everybody went home and changed. And I practiced the songs and I played for the anniversary that day. Wow. And that was my first time ever playing a drum set. And uh, I remember my brother playing around. He was like, yeah, she's going to get on there and play one beat, one little beat. <laughs> and afterwards he was like, OK, I got to give it to you. you know. Wow. But it, it even with that. Um, I think that was kind of the things that started my relationship with God because he started showing me because I would just sit, put headphones on, close my eyes and envision a drum set. And while songs are playing in my ear, I'd act like I was playing. And that and when it became reality, that's just how I started See, playing. That's crazy. To me. <laughs> and like I said, even the fact that Beck would be like, OK, because I'd probably like, yeah. And she would vouch for me. Yeah, I'm saying that, yeah. but that is like, that's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I had, like, me, I'd probably be like, number one, like, she ain't getting a Mr. Quirk yeah. up there. Yeah. Little fella yeah. don't off beat. Right. And then I wouldn't have wanted you to embarrass yourself. Exactly. But it was, it so, was not even, even that, but like, 
the choir was huge at that time. It was mm -hmm. a lot of members. Mm -hmm. So you got to convince, mm -hmm. not just them, you got to convince the musicians that mm -hmm. she's going to do good. With and no practice. With no, all of them knew I had never played before. All of them. And, and, and I think, you know, that's what made my mom like so special. Like I always say, all four of us say it, like she was the greatest mom ever. Mm -hmm. People say that about their moms, but no, 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 no. <laughs> Like she was literally the greatest mom ever to, to like you said, to just have that type of just to be honest, for lack of a better term, faith in mm. me that, OK, I know that you can do this, yeah. you know, to be confident. Yes. Good. Yes. And so, you know, it was so many other things like she always just she drove me. I'm not to, not to just keep talking about her, but she was a very influential thing mm -hmm. in my childhood years. Um, but also my dad, my dad was that was my best mm -hmm. friend. Mm -hmm. Like I love man. Melvina. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't call that name out. <laughs> but yeah. He, so um, going back to, to me, like like I said, I just felt set apart. My, my siblings were straight A students. A's and B's, not Jessica. Jessica brought home D's and F's, and and the, and then when I would get a strong C, I felt good about myself, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that was probably the only thing that I felt like I kind of disappointed my mom with was the fact that like my siblings were so good at that, mm -hmm. and I would bring home media, not even media. So even grades. looking back at it, do you think? You were just being lazy or do you think like that was where you were? I was 100 percent lazy. OK, 100%. so that's why the disappointment, because she knew. Yeah, I was just like she knew this other stuff was yeah, in you. She knew 100%. that was in you. I could give an example, Mom, but they wanted to put me in like this remedial math, oh, which was going to take me. <laughs> I would have graduated my senior year doing algebra one. Mm. That's how long it was going to take. And my mom was like, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and so she went during the summer and fought for me to take algebra one. OK, fought, told she can do it. I know my daughter can do it. I went my ninth grade year, took algebra one and failed mm -hmm. hard mm -hmm. and end up having to do summer school. Um, Actually, I ended up taking algebra one again my 10th grade year, then went and took um, geometry in um, summer school and okay. then went. And when I took algebra one again, I made a 99, went okay. to geometry, made a B. And then when I got algebra two was acing it. And so it wasn't it wasn't like um, I couldn't do the work. I mm -hmm. was I, I, it, I wanted to do other things. Too much other mm -hmm. stuff had my attention. Gotcha. I'm looking I'm just being honest. I'm looking at the janitor cleaning the floor. You know, I'm looking at people outside like, you know, man, I wish I could just do mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. outside rather than being here. Can mm -hmm. we do something else? And so my attention was never on what the teacher was teaching. Mm -hmm. But when it because I learned this later on that um, I need you to teach it. If, if I let me get it and once I get it, let me just take the test. Let me just mm -hmm. be because I have it now. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to sit through a whole lecture on all of this stuff. I don't need a whole bunch of homework. I've already learned it. Mm -hmm. And and it took me a while. It really took me until um, my 20s to learn that that's how I learn mm -hmm. is that I catch things. Um, and, and and then once I catch it, just let me do it. So normal class does not do it, it for does you not because do for me. with me being a teacher, you know, you have to you really teach to the majority mm -hmm. and have to try to gather the others, because there are some that even after the homework, they're going to need more help. And so you have to try to find that middle ground. So you're not you're an outlier. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're somebody who literally. needs it a different way, because by the time y'all do this, you're not getting to do all this homework. All right. And then you're going to be right. failing. Exactly. Because now, doing cause the now I forgot it because you took three classes to teach something that I and I'm just like, let me apply it. Once I apply, I've got it. But you took so long, I, I'm not even interested anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. So and, and if I knew how I learned then and been able to apply it in school, I would have been a, I'd have been a straight A student. Mm -hmm. you know? But the thing was, the teacher would not. It would have been rare that a teacher would have said, OK, 
I feel your beat. We'll do it right, that way. Right. It, nine times out of ten, it wasn't going to work that way. Now, maybe, maybe you could have found somebody who, okay, Jess, you got it. Okay. Yeah. Take tests. Yeah. All right. But you still got to yeah. sit in class and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and it, I do. I pray. I, I meet a lot of kids who I see have that same issue. Um, and I, t I try to talk to the parents. Not that I'm a teacher or anything, mm -hmm. but I try to talk to parents and say, okay, find out what they like to do. Mm-hmm. And use those little things to help them to teach them as they go. You know, mm -hmm. if they're not great at math, but they love football, mm -hmm. use yardage, you, you know, and mm -hmm. then that it'll spark something in them. OK, OK, I can use it this way. You know, right. um, but yeah, that's definitely I, I was very, very different. I would say, shoot, I was I've been different my whole life. It never mm -hmm. it has never stopped. But, yeah, I've been very, very different. I always felt set apart from anywhere I was at. I always felt set apart. And um, but I appreciate my parents. I appreciate my siblings, too. Now, now when I go back and think about it, because even them, like, like I said, they joked around a lot. You know, telling me I was adopted and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> but um, but they still they even though they would joke around, they still encouraged all mm -hmm. the stuff I did, mm -hmm. all of it. So was the uh, drumming was the first um, musical. I know you did keyboard too. Did you do keyboard before so, or after the drums? So yeah, drums came first, and then I started taking piano lessons. Okay. But again, not knowing piano lessons was never going to do anything for me. Mm -hmm. um, going down the line, of course, I ended up I, okay. I can play by ear. Like, let me hear mm -hmm. it. Let me find it. I'll mm -hmm. do it myself. So the reading the notes, reading them. I mean, I I learned how. So I played clarinet in. Um, OK. And See, I middle forgot school. about that. Yeah. So I played clarinet in middle school. Those notes are the same as key um, piano notes. Mm -hmm. And so. I'm able to, if I can see the music, I'm like, oh, okay, I know what that is. At least I know what key it's in. Mm -hmm. But as far as just reading and playing, no. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that was kind of, because my sister actually took piano for a long time. Mm -hmm. So she would read, but me, I just catch it and go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So when did you first play in front of an audience besides like a recital or whatever with mm -hmm. piano or keyboard? I think it was, I started playing at the nursing home. Okay. Yeah, when I got a little old. So Jill was playing for a, a long time, and then I started learning and, songs. And too. they may not know about the nursing okay. home in case they haven't seen <laughs> Kevin's <laughs> show. So, yeah, that's the other thing. Our previous guest, Kevin Pope, is Jessica's big brother. Right. So some of their stories, you know, you'll hear some of the same references. Yeah. But, of course, from a different viewpoint. Yeah, so Mama... Um, I think it was every Thursday, every every week, every Thursday. Um, at that time, it was just um, me, Kevin, and Jill. Um, Chad wasn't born yet, and um, Mama had this bright idea to go to the nursing home. And I'm like <laughs> seven, eight years old. I'm like, man, I don't know none of these people. I wasn't. I'm not. Well, I'm not gonna say I'm one too fond of old people, but I the thought of a nursing home was kind of right. weird to me, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, the people would, they knew we were coming. So they would put all the, the people in a big circle mm -hmm. and we would be in the middle. And, you know, some of them are coherent. Some of them are not. So right. as like a six, seven year old, it's kind of scary, right. you know, and mama's making us like hug some making and, noises. Yeah, make all kinds of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and she's making us love on these people. You got mm -hmm. um, people slobbing it out. Right. And you, she's like, kiss them, love them, hug them. Um, but she also, she made us, you know, um, sing, she made us, uh, read scriptures, she made us pray. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think when I got to a certain age where I, I had started playing a little bit, um, I, I think Jill had started first and then I, I think I learned one song mm -hmm. and I started playing. I think that's the first time I ever like played okay. in front of like a crowd or something like that. But yeah. And your mama had this incredible way of make it y'all were her kids so okay mm -hmm. but she thought she could make anybody do anything oh, yeah. 100%. and most times they would yeah like she you'd be saying no she'd be like oh uh-huh yeah you can do it so, yeah yeah no oh, uh -huh. yeah. go ahead and i mean she would like yeah almost how like how mary did jesus like 
told you what the problem was. Mm -hmm. and what's that got to do? Whatever he tell y'all do, y'all do that. Right. And walked off. Right. That was basically like mm -hmm. your mom was. Yep, you got to do this. That's exactly how she was. <laughs> Even at church, like, I mean, for us as her kids, we got volunteered for everything all the time. Mm -hmm. it, you could like, I try to hold my head down when they ask the volunteers, <laughs> and she would stand up and call one of our names. Mm -hmm. um, it and even even she was part of like everything in church. Mm -hmm. She volunteered everybody. Oh right. yeah, you gonna you gonna lead this song. Oh yeah, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Come on, make sure you come out tomorrow. I want you to do this. And I'm just like. Who does she think she is? Right. You know, but to be honest, I see some of them traits in me now, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, like mama, mama, we were involved in everything because she made us. Mm -hmm. And I don't use the word forced because, um, like we didn't mind. Like she raised us to a place where we didn't mind going to church. And mm -hmm. my dad, like my dad did too. Mm -hmm. My dad was influential and he, he woke up, he made sure we had our clothes on. We, at one point we were going, sometimes we'll go to his church. Okay. And when we went to his church, we sang in the choir. Really? Never went to a practice, <laughs> <laughs> never went to a practice, but he made sure we were singing in the really? choir with him. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then, like I said, even at, at our church, we were part of everything, mm -hmm. you know, um, Sunday school, Bible study, everything, youth vacation, choir, Bible youth school. council, yes. everything we was involved with. They knew the Pope kids was going to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, even if she wasn't there, she, mm -hmm. you had to go represent for her. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Were you ever a junior usher? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, okay. definitely. All of us were. Mm -hmm. Yep. Every, I mean, every shoot, even all of our cousins. It that was probably the biggest junior usher board I've okay. ever seen. So yeah, we definitely was on the junior ushers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did devotion. Mm -hmm. You know, Mama taught us how to do that. Um, only thing I never got down was calling out hymns. That okay. Was it. Other okay. than that, yeah, I learned everything at church. And do, so, how do you? Because you know, churches. Everybody's flow mm -hmm. is different. Each church is, but I know for me, so I'm asking about for you, mm -hmm. like church was my training ground mm -hmm. as far as getting up in public mm -hmm. and not being as afraid to do things. So do you feel like that contributed to your boldness? Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, because at one point, like it was one thing to get up and sing with everybody. It was one thing to, um, Every now and then they'd ask you to do like a speech or something, but it got to the place because I, I actually grew up. I think I didn't I didn't leave until I was like 20, 21. I ended up being over the youth choir. So I was okay. the choir director. OK. Um, and that right there. And even while I'm directing the choir, mama yelling my name out, <laughs> encouraging me, you know, that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it definitely made me bold. Um and and made me stand on my own two feet because I had to make decisions mm -hmm. at a young age for everybody. Mm -hmm. What songs are we going to sing? You know, it's even bold in Christ to say, OK, what's the feel? What's the spirit right here? Mm -hmm. OK, I need to pick a certain song. Mm -hmm. And and not just um, my mama, but even Pam, Pam mm -hmm. and, you know, our cousin Pam. Right. Um, she encouraged me all the time. She would always tell me that, you know, I know you can do it. I know you good at this. I, you got it. You mm -hmm. know, I'm having to go to other people's churches and direct in front of them, you mm -hmm. know, um, over the youth council at one point. So having to choose places that we go have fun or do stuff or what we're going to do in the community. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it definitely, um, it definitely is a parallel to why I'm, I'm so, I, I don't want to call it bold, but it, yeah, <laughs> it I is guess bold. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, um, but yeah, it definitely was, like you said, a training ground um, for me um, and, and not just in that area and so many other areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because most times our our lives become spillovers. Mm -hmm. You know, what if, if we're doing a thing here. We're probably more than likely we're going to be have that same personality in another field if it's suited for us. Right. <clears throat> um, so you did elementary, middle, all of that things. When you when you think back, are most of your are most of your memories about church? Home life or school. So, of course, home life because yeah. there was never a dull moment in your Ever. house. Ever. Um, but <laughs> then do you remember, do you feel like you remember as much about school as you do about what happened in the church? Because mm -hmm. when I hear you reflect a lot, of, I rarely hear 
you talk about things that happen in school except when y'all in the other bushes were going to fight on the school bus. Yeah, <laughs> we were. Not each other. No, but no, no. We were. Yeah. That's galvanizing a, that's a whole the troops. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't remember a lot about school because I didn't really like it. Mm -hmm. um, and then at one point we moved. See, at in elementary, I was with my family, mm -hmm. you know, because we stayed in New Orleans and, mm -hmm. you know, and all my cousins and people I went to daycare with, all of them right. were there. And then we moved to Aiken and Aiken. You were what, middle school? No, 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 no. I was, um, I was only in the second or third grade. When y'all moved to Aiken? Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. Okay. Yep. Because, yeah, they, yeah. So. Because Green Road, where'd you go when y'all were there? Uh, I went to Greendale. Okay, so you still went to the same school and everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then when we moved uh, to Aiken, I went to Chucker Creek. Okay. Now, what's our age difference? How old are you? Um, I'm 35. And I'm. I was about to say I'm 40. <laughs> Take it back to you. Because <laughs> I was about to say, I'm wait. <laughs> I'm my age going up. And you all staying the same. That's funny. You said you're 35. Mm -hmm. I'm 52. So what's that? What 20? No, girl, we got that. We got that. We got that. This part: thirty-five, fifty-two, seventeen. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seventeen. <laughs> so there's seventeen years between us. Wow. Okay, I didn't realize it was that much. So, because I remember when I was in college, y'all were still y'all were on Green Road then. Mm -hmm. The first part of my college experience I think and then y'all moved mm -hmm. and that's when I used to come crash on the couch in Aiken from from school sounds like so, you didn't make it to the couch <laughs> so seven, 17 interrupting years interrupting our cartoons oh well 17 <laughs> years okay yeah um <clears throat> because like I said I, did, I just don't remember you talking a lot about school are there any teachers that that stand out as somebody who got Jessica. Um, that was, I would say if it was one that stood out, I think her name was Miss Robinson. She was a black lady at South Aiken. Um, I think she was the uh, like the culinary arts slash. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you've been blessed by today's show, feel free to let us know. And if you'd like to sow into this ministry, become a sponsor or contact us. You can reach us at 803-221-0169 or you can email us at the SSBB show at gmail.com. Let's continue this journey together. We need and would love to have you as a sponsor. Absolutely no gift is too small. Please note the info regarding giving and help us spread these testimonies around the world.